thank you so much for joining this hustle workshop series so i just want to say hi to all of our participants right now hello renzo hello clarice hello jesse hello jovi hello michelle hello melin hello angel hello johans hello behina hello um aileen felicity Marinelle, Jovi, Patricia, Kiana, Krisha, uh, Ihan, Iana, Shaina, Janela. How are you guys? If you can turn on your video, I would appreciate that much. But if you can't, it's fine. Thank you so much for joining us today. I am so excited for this. Um, so, kamusta? How is everyone? How is everyone, guys? Um, I hope you're doing all well. It's such a lovely day here in London. Um, I hope everyone's well in the Philippines. If anyone is okay to, I'm sorry, if anyone has a problem with me speaking in Tagalog, because mostly magta-Tagalog ako later, just tell me so I can speak in English a bit. Ayun, kung meron tayo mga, if there's people, if there are foreigners here, just let me know. Okay, but hello everyone. Nice to see you. Um, thank you so much for joining us and for the people live, uh, for the people watching via Facebook Live. Thank you for um joining us. So I guess should we start? Are you guys all ready? Are you guys all ready? Yeah. <laughs> okay. So let's start. I want to start by introducing myself. I am Ella Ivorian Lubag. It's Ivorian, not Averin. <laughs> I'm Ella Ivorian Lubag. I'm pure Filipina, 24 years old. Uh, my hometown, my hometown is Laguna, Philippines. Um, and I've been modeling for over two years now. So I just want to tell you a bit of how I started in the industry. So I started way back years ago um, through pageant. And then there's this one opportunity that came up, which is Global Asian Model. Parang perfect yung timing kasi pagod na ako sa pageants. And I was so exhausted at pageants. I just wanna, but I wanna do something about my dream, you know? So, and then this opportunity came up. It's a Global Asian Model. It's a modeling competition in the Philippines. Uh, kami yung first edition na yun. It was 2018. And then luckily, I won the competition and which gave me a, a modeling contract with Empire Mercator. It's my agency back in the Philippines. And then, so that's how I got exposed in the industry in the Philippines. And then, merong isang casting that I did. And that's how I met Diego and Nina. They scouted me. So I'm now part of Luminary Models. They're my mother agency. And then, sila yung gumawa ng paraan to um, find agencies for me abroad, which is um, Body London here in UK, um, Talk in Dubai, and two management for Copenhagen, Barcelona, and Berlin. So that's a quick background of my story. I have no modeling workshop experience whatsoever. I've never attended classes. All that I know right now are self-taught, and just through my experiences so disclaimer i'm not really an expert this is just i'm just sharing with you all of my experiences so yeah let's start so first um let's start with posing next slide please so i don't know if you know this model who here knows this model meron ba just Raise your hands. No, wala. Walang nakakaalam kung sino siya. Anyway, she is my, she is the only one that I look up to in the industry. Um, when I started modeling back home sa Philippines, um, I, I don't have anyone to, to ask advices sorry, pieces of advice or um, tips, you know, wala akong mapagtanungan kung paano ba tumatakbo ang industry, how should I act, how should I, paano kayo lulugar yung sarili ko. So, all of these are just my observa observation during the industry and, every, and during how I work. 
So, but the number one model that I look up to is Kokorocha. She's a Canadian model. Um, she's 32 years old. She's a mother of three beautiful kids. And she is known as the queen of poses. So how did I discover Kokorocha? It's funny because a few years back, I was just scrolling through Facebook. And then I saw this post by my friend, uh, Kapwa UPLB alumni then, Moe Villanueva. Um, he posted a video of Kokorocha just behind the shoot doing poses. And I was in awe. Sobrang amazed ako. Parang at that moment, I fell in love with her. I got curious with her. I did um, research about her and at that moment that's when I discovered that oh my gosh I have a passion for modeling and I want to do what she's doing you know so then ko na realize na so na posing is not just a typical na parang you'll just face the camera and you'll just be pretty it's not that there's a for me I'm um, just discovering kokoracha gave me a deeper meaning of what posing is and for me posing is a form of art like music like dancing like painting like um visual art it's also a form of art so for me um posing tells a story or it can create the story or at the same time when audience um when people look at the photos they should somehow feel an emotion or a feeling, you know, it's an avenue to just release creativity. And for me, posing and modeling in general is my own self-expression. So here, um, as you can see in the left photo, this is just some some of typical kokorocha poses. It's amazing kung paano niya ginagalo yung hands niya, yung legs niya how he how she uses her face expressions her angles and ang ganda nung kinalab, kinakalabasan so i just want to share to you in this workshop how can we be comfortable and somehow be and somehow be our own version of kokoracha kasi uh, i don't want a copy of i don't want a copy kokoracha gusto ko lang na magkaroon ng sarili kong uh, version or She'll just be my inspiration. But uh, in my work, in my shoots, I'll be myself, Ella Ivorin. So, okay. Um, another amazing fact about Kokoroch as well. Meron siyang book, which is called Study of Pose. And in that book, it's this thick. I wish I had the copy. It composes of 1,000 photos of herself, different poses. So it would be really an honor as well na maging mentor ni na maging mentor ko si Kokorocha. Anyway, let's go to our more specifics, tips in posing uh, for the camera. Ito yung work, ito yung naman yung topic ng workshop natin. So number 1, basic poses. How do you start or where do you start? In, in a shoot or in posing. Alam nyo ba, ang daming nagtatanong sa akin ito, pero para sa akin, isa to sa mga pinakamahirap na sagutin na tanong. Kasi, I guess you'll find out later. Hindi ko alam kung, kung paano ko specifically masasabi sa, sa tao, kung paano ko nagpo-pose. Kasi, mostly it start, it, I'm just being spontaneous. I don't really plan what to do. So, <laughs> hello, Diane. I don't really plan what to do. So, but habang pinag-iisipan ko tong question na to, paano nga ba nag, paano nga ba ako nag-start? So, I'll give you and I I'll give you this thing. Number 1, you should know your angles or your best features. So, how do you do that? Paano mo malalaman kung ano yung good angle mo or best features? So, what I did personally is that um I look myself in the mirror, I check myself out, literally, na parang, kumbaga, when you're, when you're out in the streets and um, you're attracted to someone, di ba, you, you check them out, kumbaga, yun yung term nila, you check them out, di ba, you see what, what their best features are. So that's what you do. Face in the mirror right now, if you have one, um, 
check yourself out. Tingnan nyo ano yung mga best features nyo. So for me, let's start with the face. I really love my jawline. I used to hate this when I was younger kasi feel ko ang laki-laki ng mukha ko. Alam mo yun, yung mga pag bata pa tayo, we have so much insecurities. So I used to hate this. I used to hate my big lips. But I realized it's such a big asset. And then I love, I love the shape of my eye. You know what? Kahit yung mga small details na, saan yung mga beauty marks siya? Kunyari ako, meron akong nunal sa face. Ayan, marami akong nunal sa face, malapit sa ilong. Take note of that. And na-notice ko din when I, pag may araw, tapos, alam mo yun, yung nakaharap ka sa araw, na-realize ko na, ang ganda pala yung shade ng mata ko, kakaiba yung, hindi siya yung, Plain brown. It's a different shade of brown. Pero I appreciate the shade of brown. I wish I had blue eyes, pero I am thankful for what God has given me. So anyway, so start with that. You know, ako, my best angle is this side. Just because na mas sharper yung jawline kesa dito. Mas defined yung jawline dito. So start with that. And then, not only that, you also take note of your flaws. Okay, la, hindi tayo perfect. We have flaws, but try to embrace it. So let's go to like a, our even our body parts. For example, ako, I have broad shoulders, which I really like. I really love. But na notice ko na pag I'm doing poses na parang nakakuba or something. Sometimes I I look a bit small sa photo, so I try to emphasize this feature, good feature of me by parang making myself wider in photos, you know? And then, I noticed then, na uh, madalas yung mga poses ko is nakapamewang, more on focus sa, sa waist. Kasi, it's another feature that I like, I, I'm comfortable with as well, to to highlight. Kasi maliit yung waist ko. Kung baga, parang meron, meron akong hourglass shape at the upper part of my body. So, yun. I also like my neck. And then, my flaws naman, I don't like how big my calves are. So, this is really important, guys. Criticize yourself. Take note on your good and bad features. So, for example, I don't like my calves. It makes me look uh, mas maliit sa photos. Alam mo yun? You want to somehow elongate yourself in photos and panira yung calves ko kasi sobrang laki. So, what do I do? I don't Hindi ko naman siya pwedeng paltan. I, I, I don't want to do that. So, I can do that siguro uh-oh, by working out. Pero you can't do that like overnight. So, what do I do in photos? Since it makes me smaller, I want to do something that makes me that makes it uh, makes me look taller. So, what do I do? I can do somehow like parang one foot forward para lang mas elongated. Yung legs tingnan, hindi naka-emphasize sa calves. O kaya kung landscape yung photos. Um, uh, ipopoint ko yung feet ko na parang pag ganyan, instead na ganyan lang nakapoint yung feet and then I would look longer so hello, okay, same thing with you guys as well uh, um, know your best features and your, and your not so best features so that's one big thing even the small details would help so, for example, sa shoots, um, if I'm outdoor and a photographer goes uh, do a close-up on my face, anong gagawin ko? Hanap ako ng ilaw, tapos paano ko maganda yung light? Eh, since I know the fact na maganda yung side kong to at maganda yung, yung shade ng mata ko, harap ako sa ilaw at sana ma-feature yung mata ko. So, yung mga small details, it really matters. Now, um... Another thing, there is no such thing as basic poses. Okay. For me, I'd like to think na this basic por- poses, as people call it, are the go-to poses. At this varies in every individual. So iba iba yung go-to pose ko, iba yung go-to to poses nyo. Go-to is parang yung yung mga unang poses na lag. So, I start with this poses to somehow warm up. Kunyari, when I'm in a shoot, to warm up. And at the same time, para matimpla yung mood ng shoot, I would get comments from photographers 
parang okay ba yung ginagawa ko? Tingin okay ba yung yung nagagawa kong poses? So I would start with this um go to poses tapos eventually be, depende sa sa flow ng shoot ano um I would eventually do more new poses. So and at the same time make sure that your go to poses are poses that you're comfortable with, okay? Or it comes naturally from you. So it emphasizes your your good features and at the same time you're comfortable and it's it naturally comes from you. Now, so with that in mind, let's go to the types of shoots. We'll apply this um, two tips that I gave you. We'll apply it and uh, at the same time, we'll learn more yung mga different kinds of shoots. So, this slide is a type of beauty shoot. And um, for beauty shoot, um, for beauty shoot, ang frame usually is, of course, your face or shoulder up. And um, so for this type of shoot, you want to... Uh, feature or give emphasis sa makeup or your face. So, since limited yung frame or maliit yung frame, all that you need to do is just, for poses, you can just move your, your hands, your angles, okay? So, for example, for this shoot, ang go-to poses ko madalas is this one. I really like putting it here or something like this. Or if the photographer would allow it, I, I will raise my arms like this. Tapos parang ito yung frame. So, so find, your, find the mirror. Try to think of your go-to poses for this kind of shoot, beauty shoot. That, dapat you have in mind that what you're selling is the makeup or the face. Okay, so next slide. Okay, this one, ito naman is an e-commerce shoot. So, iba-iba, it varies, but usually for e-com shoot, um, usually it's for selling clothes. Um, usually, ang poses dun is um, front, side, and back, just showing the clothes. But these two e-com shoots that I did are somehow different. So the one in the right, let's start with that. So I did a shoot with Nasty Gull. They're selling um, clothes. Sorry, excuse me. And then it's kind of different sa typical na e-com shoot kasi they wanted to be a bit more fierce. They don't want yung parang typical poses lang na straight lang and just showing the clothes. Kasi nila medyo may konting movement. You know, so no giving um knowing that or having that in mind na they want that fierce, soft, fierce look, tapos they want a bit of movement. So in this type of e-com, and I still want to sell the clothes, of course, the product. So what I did is like in this photo, for example, yan, oh hello guys, my <laughs> baby is tong sweater na to or cardigan na to. So I'm putting my hands on the cardigan. I'm somehow like playing with the clothes. I hope I can show you more photos. So for example, naman in this in the left photo, this is a e-com shoot that I did with um, Machine A. And this is the designer, Mason Margella. And then for for this client naman, they wanted more unusual poses kasi medyo medyo high fashion yung clothes. It's not like Katulad ng nasigal na medyo parang um, for typical clothes na you, you'd wear in public. So this one medyo high fashion. So they wanted more movements. So since I saw the clothes na, uy, pabilog siya. Oh, well, yung vest. Ang cute. Ang ganda. Nakakaiba. So I wanted to show the people or or show the people that are buying or looking in the website through the photos na, I am selling this oval shape vest. So how do I do that? If I kung ilalagay ko lang yung kamay ko na like this, eh din natakpan ko yung oval na vest. So what did I did? I put my arms up, you know, para makita yung shape. 
I put my arms away from the vest para makita yung shape. So, these are some of the things that you have to put in your mind, especially when you're working with a client or when you're trying to sell products. I guess same thing with photographers as well. So, in this, this is such a good example because uh, the photographer focused on just exposing as well the details nung, nung damit, if, if you guys get what I mean. So, anyway, so that's Ecom Shoot. Let's go to the next slide. Okay, ito naman, um, gusto ko lang din i-share na when you're doing a shoot, it's not just yourself. A shoot is a team, a team, a collaboration of creative people. We have photographers, of course, you, the model, hairstylist, makeup artist, and minsan meron pang creative director or kaya yung clients. But always know that it's always a teamwork, okay? You can't have a good photo or in a shoot na just on your own, okay? So respect the people that you're working with um, ask for their insights because it's really important. So in, in this photo, this is a job I did for one hair product here in London. And I just want to, parang gusto lang ipakita sa inyo kung anong nangyayari behind the shoot. So here in this photo, makikita nyo, okay, wardrobe. And then, ayan yung mga pegs or um, Ano ba? Types of clothes na gusto nilang ipasuot sa akin. Deliverables. Deliverables is either gagawa ba ako ng stills or photos or videos. So, yan. Ang uh, nakalagay dyan, gagawa ako ng photo and video. And then, sa baba, yan yung somehow yung mood board or yung parang vision nila kung ano dapat kalalabasan or ano yung may kita sa photos. So, most of the shoots here uh, in in London, they're in general they're more organized compared back home because they want everything laid out. And one thing that they always um, put is the mood board. And tawag nila mood board or sa Pinas we call it pegs. Na gulat ako when when I got here I was asking yung agent ko, "Uy, meron ba silang pegs ng shoot? Kusa ko malaman ko ng pegs." Tas, hindi niya ako masagot, parang hindi niya nasasagot yung tanong ko. Tapos na-realize ko, wala palang term na peg dito sa, sa London. So, they call it mood board. So, dito sa mood board, dito niyo may kita yung vision ng team ng, or ng creative director. Kung ano yung gusto nilang makita sa photos. Ano yung, what story they want to tell. Um, what poses they want to see. What look they want to see. What kind of makeup, what kind of hair. So, kumbaga, this would brief you. This is really important when you go to a shoot, always ask, ano yung mood board? Ano yung pick? What do you want? So, you would know ano yung nasa isip nila and, and, and use this as well to visualize yourself in that mood board and, you know, visualize yourself. Oh, I have this type of clothes. I have this type of makeup. I have this type of look. They want this kind of vision. That's when you start to brain, ang tawag ito? to like think of poses or to start visualizing yourself what poses can i do to to target or to reach that vision okay so that's really important okay next slide okay on this left photo this is somehow a lifestyle commercial shoot and the photo on the right is an editorial there are two different um, types of shoots. So for lifestyle, actually, this is such a memorable job for me. This is, ito yung first job ko na ginawa nila akong blonde. And ever since, I became blondie. <laughs> so itong shoot na to, it's also memorable kasi yung friend, friend of a friend of mine saw it in, in um, Singapore sa train, sa train mismo nila. And ang laki ng mukha ko. And I was like, hindi ko alam na doon pala nila ilalagay. So it's such a memorable job for me. Sana nakita ko siya in person. Anyway, so 
lifestyle shoot. What is lifestyle shoot naman? I always, for models, this is what I think. When people tell me, okay, we're doing a lifestyle shoot, or when photographers tell me it's more of lifestyle, what I think is that, ano yung typical na ginagawa ng tao in everyday lives? So, those are the poses that you usually do. For example, you you smile more in lifestyle. For example, in this photo, you smile more. You do, um, kumbaga, you mute your, or you mute down, or you lessen your crazy poses or unusual poses. Kasi people, it's just think of what a normal people would do in their everyday lives. It can either be like, parang, kunyari, I don't know if, You've tried this you on your Instagram post yung parang you're walking kunyari, and then you take a photo. So that's more of a lifestyle shoot. Smiling is more of a lifestyle shoot. Now for the photo on the right, this is an editorial that I did for French Fries magazine. Um shot by Rory. Um and it's so different if you compare the photos. You don't usually see people on the street just kicking and doing these poses, diba? Right? So an editorial is more of the unusual poses, fashionable poses, crazy poses. Sometimes it can be not a crazy pose, but standing still along them. But in general, editorial or fashion shoots can either be anything. So yun lang. You can be creative in this kind of shoot. So uh, just a bit of a story. I would show you. I would show you as well yung video ng nung shoot na to yung mga um, raw photos and how para lang mak- makita niyo yung comparison para ay okay so just a, a quick story lang so dito sa shoot na to nagulat ako na for this um, layout gusto lang nila is trench coat lang yung suit ko and I'm down for that <clears throat> and At first, I was starting with my go-to poses. So, yung mga pamewang, yung mga ganyan, yung mga lift ng arms. Pero, syempre, hindi, mo mas- hindi ka masyado makagalaw. Kasi nga, ako, at the- I didn't want to show my-, my whole upper body bare. So, parang minimal lang yung movements ko nung una. Ganyan, ganyan lang. Ayan. I don't know if you can see me. Ganyan, ganyan lang. But then... Um, so, like what, I'm, like what I said kanina, I started with my go-to poses and chine, uh, chine chempo, ano, 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 ano ba? tinitimpla ko or parang um, kumakapa, kinakapa ko yung mood ng shoot and I was always looking for comments and criticisms from the from the team. So, if I'm doing this poses, what are their reaction? Okay ba? Are they commenting something? And while they're commenting that, I was like, wait, I want to do more. I don't want to just do, ayoko lang yung parang since naka-trench coat ako at, at yun lang yung suot ko. I just don't want to limit myself in that. So what did I do? As you can see in this photo, I held the, I held the trench coat in the middle with one hand and that's when I started moving. Kasi, I just want to push myself to do more poses. Okay? So this, ang sa isip ko nung time na to, this clothes na I'm wearing, na porket ito lang suot ko, it wouldn't hinder me para to make more poses or to make more movements. So that's what I did. And then that's when I just started kicking and stuff. So that's how you, that's what I, that's why I'm telling you na parang I get a difficult time when people ask me how do I pose kasi most of the time it's just spontaneous on the spot na ina- iniisip ko and this is a perfect example of that okay next slide oh i i love this shoot as well so this is another editorial that i did for print.ph and i don't know if you guys know bj pascual He's one of the good photographers in the Philippines. You should know him. Anyway, this was shot by BJ Pascual. And the head stylist was um, Andre Chang. And he was also the creative director for this shoot. Sabi niya, uh, kasi ang dami na namin shoot na mga clothes. So parang nauulit na lang yung mga poses. Parang sabi niya, 
he thought of something na parang, okay, let's make this different. Sumigaw kayo. You guys be angry. You guys scream and shout. Thus, this beautiful photo. This is a, such a nice masterpiece and a work of art. Ayan, we were just expressing ourselves as parang kinukunot ko lang. Ulo ko, I was just shouting. I was like putting my arms behind me kasi parang, ah! Ganon. Ganon yung ginagawa namin in the actual shoot. So, what does this picture say? So, I'm like what I've said, posing is an art. Modeling in general is an art. And it also doesn't, parang don't limit yourself in just doing, like just moving your arms and your legs and your face. You can also use your expressions. You can be angry. You can be sad. You can give emotion to the photo, if you know what I mean. So, You can just do anything, and that's why it's it's such a that's why it's an art. That's why I consider it as an art. Because if if you know people would feel emotions as well, and you know that you have done a good job as a model if people have felt the emotion that you're portraying in a photo. So this is a good example of that, and this is still considered as an editorial shoot. Is this also considered an outer shoot? Because we this we shot this in CC, no, is it CCP? Sorry, in PICC. We shot this in PICC, and we weren't using that much light. So that's another another thing that you guys have to consider, especially if it's an outdoor shoot. I also did a shoot with Manny Fontanilla. Can we go to the last slide, please? I just want to give a a comment about that. Last slide. Sige pa, sige pa. The one, yeah, this photo. This photo is shot by Manny Fontanilla. And believe it or not, we shot this outside his home at literal na no lights, just natural light. May cardboard, uh, cardboard lang na puti or plywood na puti sa likod ko. So, kaya white yung background ko dyan. Tapos, katabi lang kami ng construction site Okay, ganon, ganon yung setting. Try to imagine that. So this is a an outdoor shoot, pero it's just amazing how you would look at this photo and you would think that this is a stud, this is shot in a studio. But no, this is just shot outside and just using a uh, natural light. So that's also one of the things that you have to consider, if, especially if you're doing an outdoor shoot, because the limit, uh, ano ba you. Ang limit nyo is yung araw, yung time, kasi hinahabol nyo yung araw. Tapos you have to consider, as in yung sun. It's kind of um, more difficult compared to studio shoot na, na kumbaga nasa isang pwesto lang yung ilaw at madali lang kumbaga kapain yung ilaw. Pero in outdoor shoot, hanapin mo as in yung araw, baka mamaya I'm against the light, you know. So that's also one thing that you guys consider when modeling or when doing photo shoots. Find your light. Kasi ayaw mo naman na matakpan yung face mo or with darkness, di ba? So that's another thing. Pero eventually, through practice, practice of outdoor and um, any kind of shoot, studio shoot, whatever, you would eventually find yung parang rhythm mo when you, when rhythm or parang how you go well with light. So it's really a lot of practice. Okay, let's go back to two slides. Is there music? Ayan, let's watch this video. There's no music. Okay, anyway. Uh, I did this... Um, I did this... This was for Philippine Fashion Week, and one of the designer was Albert Pontanilla. This video was directed by Silver Belen. Ayan, it's for Fashion Week for 2019. So yeah, let's just keep on repeating the video. Ayan. I am not a dancer, guys. Actually, I'm a frustrated dancer. Pero like what I've been telling you kanina na, you have to sell your product. And for this one... I'm selling clothes and it's for Fashion Week. It's a de designer clothes. And I, I want to see the details of the clothes, but there are a lot of 
na sa damit, marami siyang nakalawit. Tapos, so naisip ko, um, naisip ko na agad, okay, kailangan ko paglaruan yung damit. I have to showcase the clothes. I have to play with it uh, in front of the camera. Kasi yun yung binabenta ko. Yun yung, that's what I'm selling in this in this particular shoot. Okay. And at the same time, yung videographer wanted movement. So, nagkakaroon kami, we were aligned in a vision. So, I am not a dancer. I'm actually a frustrated dancer. Pero I just tried to uh, dance and move. I, I, I know I was also parang tumatalon pa ako dito. Umiikot, ikot, ikot, pa ulit, ulit na ikot. Tapos wala akong pakilam kung napapagod ako, hinihingal ako. Kasi... You know, I am just committing myself to the vision and um, I'm committing myself to how how the vision of the of the director wants it, you know. So, yun lang. Sometimes you have to go out of your comfort zone and try to do new stuff, you know. Kasi it's, it's, this is why I tell you na it's a form of self-expression. I just expressed myself here. Yeah, so, di ba? Ang ganda, ang, ganda ng, ang ganda ng kinalabasan. Don't be afraid to look foolish or to look crazy during the shoot. Isipin nyo walang tao and you're just on your own. Just do it. You know, it doesn't matter if you look foolish or crazy dur- when you're doing it. What matters is the output. And look at the output. Di ba? Ang ganda. Okay. Next slide. As I was saying kanina... Uh, so, ito yung shoot ko for the previous photo kanina, which is the French Fries Magazine editorial. And I just want to s- make you realize how I start. So, una, ayan, ganyan-ganyan lang ako. Yan lang yung mga poses ko. Kasi nga, hindi ako masyado makagalaw. Just a typical poses, go-to poses. And then, ayan, eventually I started moving. I started kicking. I started twirling. Can we... Just continue playing that. I started kicking and moving. And yeah, that's when I, that's the moment I realized, no, I want to do more. I want to do more movements. This clothes is not going to stop me to just do more poses. So what I'm trying, what I'm trying to say here, guys, is that don't be afraid to use your hands, your feet, your expressions. Be creative in, in your shoot. Try to release all your creativity your creativeness in the youth. You know, you can go look for your motivation. For me, my inspiration is Coco Rocha. And I saw that, I saw her, that video that I was telling you earlier in the beginning. Na, that inspired me to just don't do the typical poses that people are doing. I just want to do my crazy own fun poses that I can think about on the spot on myself. So don't be afraid to do that, Okay. And at the same time, do collab shoots with with um, different photographers, stylists, just to enhance your skills, to practice, you know. Uh, ano pa, don't be afraid to look crazy and foolish. At the same time, music also helps in the shoot. So you can feel the music. Sometimes, um, pag hindi ma-explain sa inyo ng photographer or ng creative director yung gusto nilang vision, sometimes the easiest way to connect to their vision is also me- through music. You know, so may, may pwedeng specific music na it would connect to the, to the peg or to the mood board. And that really helped me a lot. I had lots of photo shoots na parang, nahirapan din ako na parang wait hindi ko magets they they wanted more and then and then it's so fun kasi and amazing na just through music they're like okay ito yung music mo feel the music and then that's when i just okay i got what they wanted so sometimes just feel the music vibe with the people vibe with the shoot be aware of what's happening in your surroundings para uh, get criticisms from your team. Are they liking the photos? Are they liking what you're doing or your poses? So vibe with them. You guys should somehow have a, a rhythm to each other or a harmony with each other. And at the same time, this is why I tell people modeling is not an easy job because you have to be mindful of other factors as well, such as the lights, the team, the makeup. Okay, may pwede ba hong show sa makeup? 
the hair. Um, recently, a few days ago, I had this spiky hair look. And I, like, as in spikes talaga yung hairstyle ko. And so, ang hirap gumalaw kasi you don't want to destroy yung hairstyle. So, you have to consider that as well. What poses can I do with this type of hairstyle? You know? And then, ano pa, other factors such as clothes or yung, yung mood board, yung, the products that you're selling, whether it's nails, makeup, shoes. If you should, of course, if you're being paid to do an e or to do a shoot and you're selling this type of product, you have to give emphasis and showcase this product. So there's a lot of things that goes into my mind when I do a shoot. That, that's why I tell people, some, there's a misconception that modeling is just posing in front of a camera. You know what? There's a lot of things that happen during shoots. So you have to be mindful of those factors as well. And, a num- and another thing, this is really, really important, guys. Make sure when you're doing a shoot, you have to be comfortable with the people that you're working with. And at the same time, you have to be comfortable with what they are telling you to do okay learn to say no you don't always have to say yes na parang, uh, there's somehow a misconception na parang, oh i can't say yes because i'm i'm their like object no guys you aren't object models are we aren't objects na people can just tell us what to do we have we are a human being we have our lives we Make sure that everything that they're telling you to do is, um, kumbaga, you're, you want to do it as well, okay? So all of my shoots, I, I gave them consent or it's consensual na, okay, I'm, I'm okay to show this part of my body. I'm okay to move with this clothes, you know? So make sure you're comfortable and learn to say no if you aren't comfortable with it. Just say it in a respectable way. And lastly, have fun and practice and just enjoy, okay? So thank you, guys. Um, I am Ella Ivorin. Thank you so much for listening, and I hope you enjoyed, and I hope you learned something. So, yeah, that's it. <laughs> All right, in this stage of the workshop, we're allowing the participants to open their mics and their videos to ask Ella any question that they have regarding modeling or photography or photo shoots or modeling in the Philippines in general. So if you have any questions, I think Ella can uh, see your videos. Ella, you can choose anyone you want to uh, no, ask the question. I think Diane Bugay raised her hand. So, okay, let's start with Diane. Hi, Ella. How are you? Hi, Diane. I'm good. I miss you. <laughs> miss you too. <laughs> so, I have a question since some of my students are here. Oh, okay. Um, so, let's say, let's say I, I'm a photographer and it's, it's kind of rare to find a really good model sometimes. You know that, right? Mm-hmm. Like, yeah, you were one of the models namin, na easiest to shoot. And we are yes. thankful for that. <laughs> but in your perspective, naman, na parang, what's your most memorable experience with the photographer or like something a photographer said to you while you were shooting? Okay. I think I dami po pasok sa isip ko, pero one thing that makes me enjoy a shoot is that ang gusto ko din sa photographer is hindi lang siya nagsistick into one position. I'm not saying it's bad, pero you know you have a connection with the photographer if you see na devoted din siya sa shoot kasi he's also doing movements and actually looking at different angles of me kasi you know what I mean? Parang hindi lang siya nakastick into one place na parang okay, dyan ka lang. Just do the specific poses. I also want to be creative. So I really appreciate when photographers tell me, just do your thing. You know, just do your thing. And then somehow eventually we'd vibe and we'd connect and the photos look amazing. So for me, those are the 
amazing moments that I get and, and I really enjoy those type of shoot. Um, one thing in particular that also remind me of when you asked this question was I had the shoot with Doc. I don't know if you guys know Doc, Doc Marlon. He's such an amazing photographer. And I was just um, listening to, to his stories. He's such a creative person. I'm just listening to his stories. Um, the, there's this, um, about, there's this like image of him or people tell stories about him na pag sinabing, oh, I'm shooting with Doc. Pag sinabing Doc, hala, naka, nakapaiyak na yun ng mga modelo. Ang daming modelo nagpaiyak dyan. Ay, ano ba? Ang daming modelong pinaiyak niyan. So parang katakot ako about there's this wrong image of him na ganun. But, and then I, we had this conversation and then I realized he's such a creative person and he just wants to push models out of their box. Na, pero it's such an unconventional way to the point the models cry. Pero his purpose was just to, to make the models think outside of the box, you know. Kasi for him, he, the photo should tell a story. And so my photo shoot with him was just easy kasi we were connecting and we were agreeing to a level na, yes, we, this photo should tell a story. And, and that's what I did. I did poses na I make expression and it's, I wish I could show you the photos, pero yun. Thank you. I hope yes. I answered the question. Yeah. Thank you. <laughs> okay, I think there's another one that raised her hand. Sino yun? Wait, paano pa makita? Ayun, si Milin. Hi, Milin. Hi. <laughs> Hi, Ella. <laughs> Hello. So, yeah, my question is, um, have you ever said no to, like, any photographers when they ask you to post like this, but you didn't feel comfortable with? Hmm, I don't think I've said no yet. Because um, the thing about me is I like to be challenged. So um, you can also do this, but it's up to you. But I don't really ask for the pegs before the shoot because I want to go to the shoot and just be surprised and just challenge myself. So as long as I see their vision and there's nothing wrong with them, I don't say no and I just do it. Pero, so I'm looking, I don't think I have said no yet kasi wala pa namang extreme na parang na ganong case. I'm really lucky na hindi pa ako nakapunta sa shoot na parang super uncomfortable to the point na it's violating my, um, violating myself or somehow I feel harassed. So good thing I haven't experienced that. So make sure you guys don't put yourself in that situation. You can always say no anytime if you're uncomfortable. Ayun. Thank you. You're welcome. Okay. Hi, Jovi. I can't hear you. Hi, Jovi. I think you're still muted. Hello? Okay, okay. Hi, while we're waiting for Jovi, do we have other questions from the participants? If you have, if you're curious as well or about anything, just ask. <laughs> Even the small details, okay lang. And okay, Jovi. While you're uh, no, waiting for questions, ah, Jovi is okay na? Okay, so yeah. Oh, not yet. Uh, yes, Yana. Okay, where's Yana? Hi, hello. Hello. Nice Hi. to meet you. So nice I have a question. You. How do you work on your um, fierce face? Because it's a little bit easier to... Uh, control the rest of the body but to control like the eyes or the or the mouth is a different <laughs> skill up there so maybe you have tips on that okay so um in addition to what i said na parang just face on face get a mirror and just look yourself in the mirror so for fears i also try to pout a bit 
not too much, just a bit. So check mo yung sarili mo kung if I'm pouting too much, is this too much? Or sometimes I also make, um, ano nga yung term ni Tyra Banks? May term si Tyra Banks eh, sa eyes. Smile. Parang smiles. Yes, exactly, smile. So try to do that as well. It also helps na you look at how models do it as well or other photos, um, editorials, magazines, and how these people try to do it. And just try to practice. So ayun, kasi you're the only one who knows your face and can control your face. So meron ka ding, find your own technique to do that specific pose, specific, um, if it's a fierce look, um, yeah, find your own technique. So for me, I do the smiles and I sometimes spout or I sometimes open the lips a bit. Ayan. Thank you. You're welcome. Okay. Should we? Okay. Hello, uh, Jovi sent the question to your chat box, if you can see. Okay, what's the question again? Uh, wait lang. Any tips on building your rapport with your photographer and at the same time, what can the photographer do to build the rapport also with the model? So I guess since we're social beings, to start it, to start building that somehow chemistry or rapport, start like interviewing the people that you're working with. What I do, kung kinyari nasa makeup chair pa ako, Kung nasa makeup chair pa ako, I try to interview. I try to interview the makeup artist. Hey, how long have you been uh, doing makeup, or how long have you been in the industry? Ayon, I start having normal conversations with them, just to see what they are as a person. You know, magkaroon ka ng konting vibe or parang konting um yung konting vibe or parang konting interaction. Have go and interact with them, and then. Building the rapport, because you can't really force to build a rapport in such a short amount of time. Because usually shoots would just take hours or maybe just a day, and you can't completely like be in line with them or completely be in rapport or in such a good chemistry with them. If you've just worked with them for you know an hour or a bit few hours or just a day, so don't I guess don't pressure yourself too much as well to to build this chemistry with the photographers because it's it's not enough time so just make sure that you understood their vision and if you have questions on their vision on what the photo should look like don't don't be afraid to ask just ask that's how you um somehow start build the rapport as well and when you guys are in line with the vision or with the mood board everything would just w- go well during the shoot or would, yeah. So I hope that answered your question. If there's still, if you need to clarify pa with that, more clarification, just tell me. Okay, there's another question from Shaina. Hi, Miss Ella. How do you ease your nervousness in a shoot? Or how to calm? <laughs> or do you ever feel frustrated after the shoot and think if you do good enough. Oh my gosh, this is so true. There are times na bigla kong may realize where's Shina? I want to see Shina. There are times na I would after a shoot, I would realize na parang wait lang, kay, may bigla kong naisip na magandang pose but hindi ko nagawa ito. Pero wala na, it's too late kasi tapos na yung shoot. But I just have to move on because I'm a bit overthinker. I don't want to stress about it as well. So if the shoot's done, just make sure you did your best in the shoot and then just move on. And then just learn learn from it, you know? Now, how to ease your nervousness or how to calm? Um, sa akin kasi parang naging, ano na siya, somehow naging routine na. So I'm just really um, comfortable na in doing shoots. But for, I guess for first timers, I have this thing. This is what I usually tell myself when I'm nervous in a shoot when I was starting, you know. Um, syempre, I, I, I get a cup of coffee, enjoy my coffee, think about the shoot. And then I tell myself, okay, Ella, magmaganda ka la. This is also what I t- told myself nung nasa pageant pa ako. Magmaganda ka la. And 
just be yourself, you know. And thinking about that, you know, parang I'll just do my best, magmamaganda lang ako, and, and that's it, I'll just give my best. I don't know if that would help, pero that's how I just calm myself, you know. I think of it na I don't have to be the perfect model for this. I just have to show my best. And whether it's good enough for them, it's fine. I don't care if it's not good enough for them as long as I showed my side of myself. So that. So yun. Yun yung, I guess, for collab shoots. Now for clients, um, dun minsan nakakakaba kasi nga you're getting, you're being paid to do this job. So, I guess it really helps as well na to start having conversations or to socialize with the team so that you're somehow comfortable with them na, you know, at wag mahiya na you know, interviewin nyo sila, makipagchikahan ka, ganun, get along with the team. So that would also help to lessen your your nervousness kasi parang, Kumbaga, when you're before when you're starting the shoot na ang feel mo na is parang ay barkada ko lang to na katro- kasi na, medyo I got a sense of who this person is so parang ay isip mo na ay friend lang friend lang to this is not a really a job you know so just and at the same time be open to criticisms don't be afraid na or wag ma mapanghinaan ng loob na pag nagbibigay sila ng comments, parang mapapanghinaan. Huwag kang panghinaan ng loob. Just use it as a good criticism to make yourself a better model and at the same time, produce better photos. Ayun. So, I think someone raised their hand pa. Sino yon? Hindi ka na nakita. Hello? I think, Ella, it's Michelle. Okay, Michelle. Hi, Michelle. Hi po, hi Ate Ella, hi. and hi everyone. Mm-hmm. So I just have a question po. How do you kickstart one's mo- modeling career? Um, kasi po, I heard kanina while you we were talking, um, you joined the modeling competition, and then you mm-hmm. got scouted. What if I don't want to take that route? Um, do you have parang agencies in mind that you would recommend? Kasi I'm interested po in the okay. future. Yes po. Sorry, you're interested in? Because um, I'm interested uh, in parang pursuing this. Um, oh, okay. Okay, gets, gets. So, yes, actually, hindi, not everyone starts from a modeling competition. Though it's also a good thing if you can start in a competition. Kasi at least you would, if it's also a good competition, meron silang mentors that can teach you and how the industry is. So parang kumbaga meron ka ng preview of how the industry is. But but if you don't want to go that route, you can also start first, um, build your portfolio. So do collab shoots. And now is, kasi we're in such a, we're in a digital world na and you have to fix your Instagram or your social media, but number one is your Instagram because um, most uh, people or clients or even agencies look at your Instagram and this is somehow your portfolio na. So build your Instagram. That's another good thing na to consider. So have your own portfolio. It doesn't matter if it's good enough or not. Um Another basic thing that you should also have are the Polaroid, Polaroids or um, ito yung mga um, photos of just yung yourself lang. So it's usually in a tank top or in a black shirt and then parang ganito yung shot. So front, full body, half body, face, side. So try to um, build good Polaroids. I can give more details on this on our next workshops. So anyway, and then you can send this and reach out to agencies. If So if you're in the Philippines, you can also, it doesn't matter if you're just reaching, uh, kumbaga, don't limit yourself to just reaching out in local agencies. You can reach out to mother agencies. You can reach out to other agencies abroad so don't limit yourself so 
but if you if you want you can just try to build um your career in the philippines so start with local agencies i can recommend number one is mercator of course they're my agency um ano pa ba luminary manila so my mother agency already has a uh philippine agency so you can reach out to them ano pa bang mga known agencies in manila new monarch um fara models uh ano pa ba marami eh. so you reach out to them either through instagram common ways through instagram tell them hi uh, i want to build your career i want to build my career and try my career as a model so here's my polaroid send them your photos if they ask for it you know and then if um ano pa ba yeah you can start with that just make sure that this agencies are legit kasi maraming ding nagkalat na hindi legit na agencies so how can you check make sure on their instagram if you're just basing it on instagram you can try to do more research and search for them on the net but if you're just basing on instagram one thing that you can do is check the photos are they giving jobs to models are they and if they're posting this photo check the model's account is this legit is she part or is he part of this model uh, of this agency so yun lang just make sure that the agency is legit i hope that helps uh, can i have one more question of all at the sure no worries um, Uh, nung na-start po kayo tsaka nag-sign with your agency, um, I heard, if I'm not uh, mistaken po, uh, parang based po kayo ngayon sa London. Mm-hmm. So, um, did they fly you po or you paid for the flight and the accommodation and all of that things? Okay. <laughs> this this varies for different agencies. So, kasi may mga kakilala ko na the agency um paid for it, pero eventually binabawi nila yung ginastos ng agency through their jobs. So, it depends. But for me, um Mercator, my agency in the Philippines, and Luminary, my mother agency, they helped me go here. So, they paid for my flights and for my visa. And then I would just eventually pay them through my jobs that I get here. Tapos, when I got here, I stayed in the model's house, which my agency here in London, which is Body London, provided it for me. Pero it's also, ano, uh, dito, it's, I also have to pay for it. And then, pero through my jobs as well. So, kumbaga, kinakaltas na lang nila yung bayad ko eventually when I get jobs. So, that's... That's how it works. And then since medyo pricey yung, yung model house, lumipat na lang. Naghanap ako ng sarili kong um, accommodation, which is, you know, kasi I, ha- I also have a goal here to earn for myself because this is my career. This is a, um, kumbaga, ito yung bumubuhay sa akin. So I should still be smart about it. So ayun. It varies in different agencies. Thank you so much, Pa. Okay. Sino pa may tanong? Meron pa ba? Meron bang nag-chat pa ng questions? Alright. In the stage, if we don't have any more questions. Ah! Meron pa! Ayan, humabol. Okay, Bettina. Yes po, ate. Hello. Hi! So, yes po. So, out of curiosity lang po, I'm just really... Uh, curious if they are specific with in terms of height po because unlike I like pageant kasi meron din height requirement mm-hmm. so I'm just wondering kung meron din sa modeling because yes. for some people yes po kasi may mga maliliit na mga <laughs> like girls like me I'm just 5'3 but uh, looking forward to be in this field of endeavor po Okay, so we are lucky. I am also lucky now. We're in this generation now where, where the modeling industry is getting more diverse. At hindi na siya yung tulad before. Kasi kung tulad siya ng before, I don't think I would have a career. I don't think I would have a career in, in this industry. So we're really lucky. Kasi before, they're really strict. Now, models should be so thin, at least 5'9", especially if you, if you want to be a ramp model. So some of those standards are still there. 
for example, um, runways and fashion shows abroad, somehow, at least they require 5'9". I'm not sure kung papasan yung 5'8", pero I know 5'9 for girls and probably like 5, I think 6 or 5'12 for guys for ramp models. And you have to have this specific body type. So usually it's just petite and thin. Now, in the Philippines, um, there are two types of industries that you can go. So in the modeling industry, you can either be a fashion model or a commercial model. Um, so fashion model in the Philippines, they accept at least 5758 now for doing ramp models for girls. And I guess 59510 for guys for fashion shows. Pwede na yon. Now, for commercial model, there's no height limit. So, okay yung height. Any height will do. And, like I said, the modeling industry is getting diverse as well. So, um, it does, so itong restrictions lang is mostly for ramp models. Pero, since like me, I'm doing editorials and I'm doing um, e-commerce shoot, Mostly, there's no height requirement for that. Like, Mary na kong work before no model, and he, she was just like, I think five five. Pero I was doing uh, an editorial for her for a magazine in the Philippines. So that's we are so lucky that we are in a generation na hindi na masyadong strict sa height. So don't make that a hindrance for you to pursue a career in modeling. May na grace pa. Okay, you're welcome. Sino na Grace kanina? Uh, hello? <laughs> I think someone had a question pa. I don't remember the name. Or is that it? Okay. Uh, if wala nang merong question, we wanna ask you then, Ella, from the Hustle Moment team, a question. So as of right now, since you're uh, modeling in London and you've been there uh, for a long time already. Oh, wait, Charlie. Meron atang nagtatanang din on Facebook Live. Okay. I, I think Daphne uh, is raising her hand. So let's, okay. let's have Daphne ask a question. Okay. Hi, Daphne. Hello? Okay. Hello, Daphne? Hello, Daphne? Okay, for this one, Daphne, I think you can send your message via chat and then we'll send it to Ella. Yeah, okay. May nagtanong din daw sa Facebook Live. What's your advice for someone like me who is not as pretty or handsome as most models usually are? I just love doing photo shoots. Hey, thanks, Ella. This is from Ramon Sito Campbell. Um, I actually you don't have to be pretty or ano ba? No, I don't think there's a specific um, kasi like I said kanina, we're lucky that the industry is so diverse. So, ako, I considered myself not pretty before. Pero, um, pero, you know, you just have to accept who you are. And, and if you think that you're not pretty or like handsome as the other models, I think you're just not in the right market. For example, in the Philippines, the market in the Philippines is mostly... Uh, mestiza, um, kumbaga half Western looking, you know. Kung nakita nyo tong mga models na lumalabas or parang sikat sa Philippines, they're usually like half Filipina, half something. I'm not saying it's a bad thing, pero I also felt insecure as well and I felt like I wasn't appreciated that much in the Philippines. There were moments like that. And I realized that Philippines is it's just the type of market of where you are. So you have to also know what type of market um, you are perfect for. Because 
for example, here in London, they like um, unique looks and my hair somehow gave me a unique look. And I'm Asian as well, you know? So, kumbaga, hindi common sa kanila makakita ng Asian tapos blonde. So, they're somehow liking my look. Now, in the Philippines, it's different. The market there is different. So, you just have to find your market. That's why mostly models just, you know, go through con- different countries para matest nila, mabenta ba ako sa country na to or not. So, yeah. Yun lang. So, Daphne, are you still there? So, just don't ever think that you're not pretty or not handsome enough, okay? It's your own features. You just have to learn how to sell your own features. Sell yourself. Yun lang. Daphne, are you still there? Ayan. I think Daphne is typing her question. So while waiting uh-huh. for her question, Ella, we want to know what else are you uh, aiming to do while you're in London, while you're there modeling internationally? What are your other plans uh, in the coming months and in the coming year? I'm glad you asked, Shardy, because I'm so excited to announce as well. Na I'm so excited to announce as well that we're finally uploading my first YouTube vlog soon. So please watch out for that. And I would be just sharing with you more of my experiences and tips as a model in my YouTube vlog. So watch out for that. We would be releasing that hopefully by February 12. And by this month, love month, we'll probably uh, upload it every Friday. So, ayun, really excited for that. I hope you guys would watch and subscribe. I would go more in depth there of, you know, posting and yung mga technical things that you should also know when you're doing a job or when you're modeling. Ayun. <laughs> Ella, we have another question sa FB Live. Okay. And after you answer his question, we'll wait for uh, Daphne and then we'll end the question and answer na din. Okay. All right. So the question is from Merck Aplaon. In your experience, how about po sa boys? Need ba maging bulky para maging model? No. It doesn't matter. It it doesn't necessarily matter Now you have to be bulk. Actually, for fashion models, for especially for ramp models and guys, they prefer not so bulky. So, wala talagang specific standard, kumbaga, kasi, um, yeah, wala specific standard, pero, wala specific standard. So, it doesn't really matter na kailangan bulky. But, you also have to, it doesn't mean na, it doesn't mean that uh, you don't have to improve yourself. Okay, so learn um or learn or get um at all dito, get feedback from people as well of what you think you can do to improve in yourself. You know, anyare. Eto kasi yung blonde ko. It was just by accident, and I just tried to kept it. And then tining na namin kung I would get jobs or not. So same thing for guys. So if you think you're too thin and people in the industry are telling you na maybe it would help to, you know, bulk up a bit, see it, try to do it. If you're too bulk and people are, you know, so it's just, ano ba? Parang just also ask for feedback, feedback from people. But it doesn't necessarily mean na you can't be a model if you're not bulk enough. Okay, Daphne message me na. Ayan. What advice can you give for aspiring models who are petite, specifically in their first screening, on how to give an impression? Di bale. Okay. So, for, for petite models, actually not just petite models, for everyone who wants to be a model or is aspiring to be a model, learn to, this is really important, learn to know your best features. 
this really helped me a lot in getting a job during castings. Kasi since I know my body figure, I know my best features, I would wear clothes. For example, you're going to castings. I would wear clothes that would emphasize on those good features. So for example, for me, I know I have a small waist. I would wear fitting tops that would emphasize to, to casters na, oh, she has a small waist. Tapos, I don't have, um, I also have like a big torso and smaller legs, which makes me look smaller. So what do I do? I wear high waist pants to make myself look longer in casting. So you can do the same thing. Um, know your best features, know what you want to improve on yourself. And if you're going to castings, make sure the clothes are... Um, Make sure the clothes are ano ba, emphasizing on your best features. Ayun lang. Same thing with petites and other kind of models. All right. If you want to- let's open our last question for this workshop. It's on FB Live from Rada. Her question okay. is, uh, do you think cosmetic surgery is taboo when finding jobs as a model? No, it's not taboo anymore. I think it only gets taboo if you're if you're afraid to let people know about it. So there is nothing wrong if you want to get um uh if you wanna go under the table and fix your 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 face or something. It doesn't matter at all. Because there are models who do this. There are models that I know who have done their lips, who have changed their chin. It doesn't matter. There are also even trans models and they're killing in the industry. So it doesn't matter at long at all. As long as you're confident with who you are right now, with what you have right now, just learn to embrace that and learn. This is, I know I've been telling this a lot during this workshop, but it's really important to just be confident with your own body and with yourself. Trust me, it it may be cliche, cliche it sounds, but that's the thing, um, key thing that you have to always remember when doing castings or when you're trying to get jobs or when you're even trying to be scouted in the industry or scouted by agency. So embrace yourself, whether the tocado ka or not, be confident, be own it, own yourself. Ayun. All right, and now we're officially closing the floor for questions. So Ella uh, will be asking you for a short message na lang to everyone who participated. And then let's take a group photo after your message. Okay, thank you so much guys for joining us today. I really appreciate that, that there are so many aspiring models in the Philippines. And like what I said earlier, wala hong nilo look up to or someone that I can just ask, you know, tips and ad- and pieces of advice back then. So I'm really happy and it this is such a fulfilling moment to me to just share you my experiences and my learning um, experiences with you to guide you into what career that you want to have as a model. Thank you so much again and I hope that was helpful and I hope you enjoyed. All right, so at this moment, we'll, uh, we'll be asking everyone to open their cameras so that we can take a group photo with Ella. Okay. All right, so guys, I think everyone is already open. Let's take a photo with the first group. And one, two, three. Smile. All right, let's go to the other group naman. So, kung hindi nyo alam kung anong group kayo, mag-smile pa rin kayo. <laughs> Mahal na lang. Pwede rin mag-post. All right. One, two, three. Smile. All right. Thank you so much, Ella. Sige, do you have other things you want to say to everyone? Um, if you guys have more questions, don't hesitate to message me on my social media accounts. It's at Ella Ivorin on Twitter, TikTok, and on Instagram and YouTube. So just message. I'm just one message away. Thank you, guys. Thank you so much, Ella, for having us today.
Thank you. All right. Thank you so much to everyone who participated. We're now going to close the live stream. The live stream will be posted on our social media accounts and then more workshops will be coming your way this month and next month. So hopefully Ella will have time also for more workshops with us. I will give time for that. <laughs> All right. Thank you so much, guys.